Hi everybody. Today I've got this rather nice PRS 25th anniversary custom to show you. And this came in uh, about a month, six weeks ago uh, from a friend of mine actually, who's someone I've, I've played with a number of times in different bands. And he was complaining that although he always loved the guitar in terms of its feel and its look and its balance, um, he's never really been that happy with the tone of the instrument itself. He's always found that it was a little bit lifeless and he always felt he had to work it so hard to get a bit of bite and snap out of it. Now, it was originally fitted with the PRS 5708. Not a pickup that I have, uh, I've had a lot of fun with. I, I don't really like them myself. I find them just a little bit flat and a little bit bland. And actually, that's something I tend to find with a lot of PRS pickups. I don't like the top end character of them. I don't think it, they, I think they're a little tame and they don't jump out at you and, and, and make you really want to strike the string, um, limiting your sort of dynamic range. I think they're very, very good going into very distorted rigs and into a lot of processing. I think they, they're, they're very good at holding their tone through those. But uh, my friend here plays this mainly directly into a blues junior. So you really need an exciting top end in the pickup to get the amp to do what you want it to do, give you the dynamic that you want as a blues player. Now, he went away with the guitar with two PAF style pickups in them, largely unpotted. All I do with these PAFs is I uh, just damp the cover slightly to stop them being a little bit too microphonic if you do end up playing quite loud. Uh, we don't want to have too many feedback issues with them. And he was finding he got a great tone just with the amp itself, but he was finding difficulty getting the pickups to behave correctly when he was trying to overdrive them again a little bit further with an overdrive pedal. And this is where uh, I sometimes do this with customers. They just bring their gear into the studio here. We crank it up and actually try and diagnose the problem. And actually, the problem was very simple. He had got a cracking tone with just the pickups and his little blues junior just a bit broken up. But to get any more gain out of it, he was using an overdrive pedal, which was the uh, Fender Santa Ana pedal. And actually it's a very, very good overdrive pedal, but it's not very good for that specific circumstance. If you take a pedal like that, it's got three tone controls, it's got uh, a level and a gain control, it's got two tonal types on it, switchable, and it has boosts for both gain and volume, well, you've got a lot of circuitry there. And most overdrive pedals actually, by their definition, tend to tighten up bottom end and actually probably uh, bring down a little bit of your brightness out of your sound and focuses the tone in the mid-range, a bit like a tube screamer does. Now, the problem with this, if you're a blues player and you've deliberately gone for something that's quite a bright pickup because you want that singing top end and you want the clarity that you're getting uh, and the dynamic you're getting from your picking, of course, suddenly the guitar is going to become a little bit boring and lifeless again. You'll get the gain, but you won't get the definition. Much, much harder to get, especially at lower volumes. Now, that's where my secret weapon comes in. And my secret weapon, and, and it's been my secret weapon in a lot of guitar rigs that I've used over the years, is the flat line booster. Now, I actually recommended, because it's a nice simple pedal, and we plugged it into the front of his amplifier, this little electro harmonics pedal. Now, I've had this one for about 10 or 12 years and not used this one very much because I generally tend to use a Flynn Amps Hawk booster or the uh, Flynn version of the uh, treble booster. Um, but this one's really good um, for humbuckers because it just creates a little bit of extra brightness. I kind of um, would say it's closer probably to a color sound, um, but with no tone controls. And it just gives you that little bit of brightness, especially when you turn the guitar down a little bit and you can leave it on the whole time if you want to, or just hit it for a bit of extra gain. Now suddenly, you're no longer crushing the top and the bottom of the sound and creating overdrive, you're just pushing the front of that slightly dirty amp. And then the tone of these things 
comes through. Now, what I'm going to try and do is give you a little bit of a demonstration of that. I don't have the uh, Blues Junior here, but I do have a little 18 Watt Watkins clone that I built many years ago, and uh, something I've used this with before as well. And I'm going to stick a microphone in front of it in here and crank it up and see if we can actually get a good representation of how well these low power pickups and a line booster work. Okay, behind me you can see the amplifier I'm using. It's a little homemade kind of Watkins Dominator clone. Um, I'm using a MOSFET uh, power dropper, which is actually just reducing the voltage across the output and input tubes. Um, but what that does tend to do when you've got it turned down this far is just disrupt the earth a little bit so you get a scratchiness on the pot. That's not a fault, unfortunately, it's just what they do. Um, so if you can just ignore that for a moment and a little bit of noise that's going to be introduced because of it when I put the um, booster in. Okay, now Mike's about a foot in front of the amplifier trying to catch a bit of the room. It's a condenser mic, it's plugged straight into my computer and hopefully it'll get a half decent sound. So here's the guitar straight through the amp, no boost. <laughs> Okay, bridge pickup, boost on 50%. Now you notice you do get an awful amount of dynamics from the volume control and from picking using the booster, more so I think than you would using something like even a Tube Screamer uh, and especially something as more complicated as Simon's old Santa Ana pedal. That is just a little bit too much squidge, you lose definition. Let's try the neck pick up the same. Now with the boost. So you can hear again, as I'm rolling the volume down, the brightness stays and you just get a lot of definition back and you don't get this kind of muddy and ill-defined sound. You're still hearing the general um, character of these pickups. So there you go, that's my, that's my sell really for line boosters more than anything else, but for low output pickups and line boosters in combination into small amplifiers. I think really, if you're a blues player, they are definitely the way to go, especially if you've got an amp unlike this one, it's got maybe a reverb tank and you don't need anything else. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.